Hey YouTube, Military Gun Guy here. I got my sexy sandals on. Um, I'm going to be doing some small run uh, parkerizing today. Um, basically, I am going to be doing this 1892 French Ordnance Revolver. Uh, this has got it back from my bead blaster guy. Uh, did a really nice job on it. I could really go through the effort of getting rid of all the pits and whatnot, but I'd rather just leave it as is. Um, the French originally blew these guns, um, but then Arsenal refinished guns actually had like a black, kind of a roughly applied black uh, oxide coating. So we're going to actually be doing that today. Um, like I said, all the parts are bead blasted. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm heating up some degreasing solution. Uh, just use uh, a big thing of purple power. You can get that pretty much anywhere. Um, then from there, I'm going to heat up the Allegheny Arsenal parkerizing solution. This is a manganese. Uh, and then from there, it's going to go into a cold dip from Caswell. This is a black oxide concentrate. So this stuff, these are all concentrates. They make a decent amount of, liquid, of uh, you know, finished material. Uh, and they can go from there. Um, what I have with the um, degreaser right now, I just have distilled water. You know, it's cheap, so I actually like using distilled water for most anything. Uh, I'm also using distilled water. And this is going to be the pot that's going to do the uh, small parts for the French Ordnance Revolver and this Hakeem that I'm finishing up as well. So it's usually easier to mix up the ratios in smaller batches and then go from there. Um, I have to figure out the ratio again. I, I forget, to be honest. So, um, but basically, I just, I just cause it's kind of, you're mixing like, I think it's 28 parts to one, something along those lines. So I'll do the conversion. But the pot's big enough to hold um, uh, the gun in its entirety, uh, actually, it should be. Um, and I can parkerize it that way. Uh, from there, it'll go into the black oxide coating and then the uh, it, black oxide process. And then from there, that'll go into uh, oil. And then it's just a matter of putting it together. So uh, I'm going to dig up the parts of the Hakeem. But in the meantime, we're going to start by basically just dropping the parts into the degreasing solution. Let them sit for a little bit. Uh, the heat and the degreaser will actually boil out most of the uh, grease that gets up into the nooks and crannies you can actually see in here possibly you can kind of see a couple spots of grease and typically where you have you can see like a little kind of a dark spot in the, the bead blasting typically you know grease gets up in there and the bead blasting process gets that out um, but it'll start to seep and that will actually affect your finish for your um, for your parts so you don't want any of that stuff uh, in your parkerizing solution because you'll actually get uh, white spots in your parkerizing and that'll basically look like shit. So we're just going to drop all these parts in. There are some parts that will not be parkerized, uh, namely the hammer, the trigger. Uh, you know, again, if you follow any of my restorations, I try to make these things as original as possible. Um, so what, I, what I'm basically doing is I'm, all the parts that were blackened or blued, I'm going to blacken on this one because the Arsenal Refinished ones were blackened. Um, and then all the other parts are going to be polished and then they're going to be strawed and I'll show you how to do that also as well and then we'll do the final assembly on it and then when I get some dyes I'll actually shoot the damn thing. Um, like I said also in here is going to be the Hakeem parts as well because the Hakeem is going to be done in a black oxide uh, so the color there won't be any color variance between the barrel even though I'm doing the barrel and the, um, the small parts separately. So but once this is boiled out and ready to go then uh, we'll put them in the parkerizing solution and uh, pretty much go from there. So stay tuned. Okay, so we have the parts on a low boil. Uh, there's no need to get too crazy with it heat-wise. Um, I have the Caswell's stuff mixed up. It's one pint to nine pints. I actually cut it down, obviously, because I'm only doing the revolver and some smaller parts. And then we have our parkerizing solution that's heating up as well. Parkerizing solution, it's critical. Uh, it'll start to start to boil, not to boil, but actually start to work around 170 degrees to 200. You don't want to get it above 200 because then you'll basically ruin your solution. So um, they have thermometers that stick on the sides. Those don't tend to work that well. I kind of just stick it in periodically after a couple of minutes uh, and kind of see where we're at. Um, that does seem to be a little bit more accurate and a little less messy because if you've ever dropped a thermometer into a glass of parkerizing solution, you'll know what a pain in the ass to get all that shit out of there is. So I'm going to actually put this barrel in there as best I can. Let that boil a little bit and then I'll put the butt in. Um, with parkerizing also, you don't want to put too many parts in at once. You kind of want to keep them scattered or spaced. So that way you're not um, overloading the parkerizing solution. Um, it will cook off. So you'll also want to 
periodically replenish it. I'm going to use this rubber mat as my um, uh, basically as my drying area. I'll put a uh, cloth down and I'll soak that with oil because um, once the parts are washed and ready to go um, after all the processes are done you're actually going to want to put it uh, in some uh, dewatering oil that'll get all the all the oil and all the stuff out of it um, so that way your parts don't rust. After that just oil the hell out of them let them sit about 24 hours for um, reassembling but let them you know and then uh, just oil the hell out of them and then assemble them and you should be good to go. So. Uh, as this progresses, I'll show you where we're at. Okay, we are getting close to our operating temperature for our um, parkerizing. So, uh, something also, just a minor thing to keep, um, keep in mind, um, is that uh, do parkerizing outside. Don't do it on your stove. Uh, this stuff does give off noxious fumes, and you really don't want that stuff contaminating anything. So what I'm gonna basically do, like for example, here's a cylinder. We're at about 165 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the parkerizing solution. And it is starting to boil. You're looking for these little, tiny little fizzy bubbles. You can leave it in until it stops bubbling. Um, I also use these plastic coated tongs uh, for the reason being is that I don't want, uh, I don't wanna scratch the parts before I've had a chance to uh, parkerize them. So. I'm just taking them out one by one and putting them in my park solution. These parts I know are nice and clean because they came out of the degreaser. The degreaser actually is pretty clean too, so it's sort of a nice thing that, you know, there's not a lot of crud. Uh, some people will actually go through and they will um, clean the parts before they send them off to get parkerized. Probably not a bad idea, depending on what you're working on. Uh, some of this stuff can get pretty, actually pretty nasty. Um, so if you want to keep your park solution nice and clean, you can already see park, it's been in the park solution for probably, I don't know, 30 seconds, and it's already starting to fizzle, uh, or turn color, actually. Um, our park solution is right around... I'm at about 170 or so. Yeah, about 170, which is right about where your parkerizing solution, actually we're close to 180. Your parkerizing solution actually starts to activate. Um, so again, you don't want to overheat your park solution. You actually want it to be um, nice and, uh, you know, you want to keep your temperature controlled, ideally. Turn this off temporarily. And what you'll want to do is just sort of turn your parts over. Depending on how they're going to take the park arising, for example, here's a cylinder. The cylinder's already looking in really, really nice condition. It went from a bright steel to a uh, well, from a bright steel finish to a uh, dark gray, which is the color uh, that I'm going for. Uh, like I said, from there it's going to go in this manganese phosphate, not manganese, sorry, this black oxide coating, and I'll just take it from one to the other um, once all these are done. Just go from one to the other, and your parts will be done at that point. It's just a matter of just oiling. Let me see if I can get this a little bit closer and get you a better view. The process is almost instantaneous as well. It's kind of the cool thing about parkerizing. You know, I've done rust bluing and I love it, but it's just sort of a pain in the ass. Um, on any gun you do, you're going to want to plug the bore. I did not do this on this ordnance revolver because the bore is pretty much shot out. I'm just going to be using some commercial ammo or some cast loads in it. Uh, but you'll definitely want to plug the bore in it. This bore, like I said, was mostly garbage, unfortunately. Here's a nice piece here. It's actually taken on a very dark finish. And once we get everything dialed in, let me get one more pot. So 
So I'm actually going to mix sort of a, just use a uh, kind of a rinsing pot and it's just water in a plastic container. With the black oxide solution, the final step, you're actually going to, uh, you can't use metal. You ideally want to use uh, a plastic container for that. Uh, the cylinder actually is still fizzing pretty well, so it tells me that's not quite ready yet. We're at about 180, about 185 degrees roughly. And just turn the parts. Again, you have a nice black finish. And you can pretty much quickly tell when the parts are done because they'll just, they'll just stop fizzing, essentially. So this one's good. So I'm going to basically dunk it in water. And from there, I'm going to put it in the black oxide solution. You just kind of let it swirl around. Like this, nice rinse. Goes into the black oxide. That goes in. You will get some parts that will. Uh, whoops. You will get some parts that will actually that will continue uh, with the process. Um, you do have to make a decision on those, uh, mainly because I mean they'll they'll keep going and going and going and going because they're still taking the park resin solution. The only minor issue is that you know I'm using a black uh, oxide after rinse to get to bring the color up so in my instance it's not super critical uh, but if you're trying to save like on a garand and you're trying to match all the parts and you're not doing a black oxide you're just doing say like the manganese or the zinc phosphate uh, having the colors match tends to be a little bit more critical uh, because you'll end up with a gun with lots of different colors um, and if that's okay with you it's not that big of a deal but if you're trying to make this thing as even as possible color wise then you'll really want to keep an eye out for the amount of parkerizing that is going or the amount of bubbling that is actually going on to um, coming out the parts because again because what you'll end up doing is you'll, you'll pull the parts out of the solution and some of it will be dark dark black some of it will be a dark gray some of it will be a medium gray depending on you know uh, the composition of the steel as well. So if you're trying to avoid that, then you're going to want to keep a really close eye uh, on your parts to make sure that um, make sure that your your color is even across the board. With the black oxide, it's five. To, I think it's 30 seconds to five minutes. So you don't really need a lot of black oxide finish. Uh, I would say this is mostly done. One more. Again, these little parts would go in. Black oxide's cool because the parts just basically turn instantly black. Uh, it's not like rust bluing where you have to sort of, you know, it's a process or whatever. Um, it just turns black. It's, it's, real, it's actually, it's a really, really nice finish. Um, I'll show you kind of where we're at on that. Pretty much done with this barrel. Turn this off, turn that off. Okay. It's been rinsed and it's basically going in there. And you'll start, like I said, you'll start to see it actually turn black almost right away. Uh, park raising can be used again and again and again, which is kind of a nice thing. Get the front here. And, you know, as long it actually, it will kind of cook off a little bit, but for the most part, it won't, uh, it won't necessarily degrade, per se. Um, you know, I mean, it'll evaporate. You have to top it with water and double check your park solution itself. But here's a nice black finish on this, if you can see that which is what we're basically going for. And I have my camera kind of pointed the wrong direction, so unfortunately, my lighting is a little off. But this is after probably, I don't know, a couple minutes. 
in the solution, and you can see where it's a nice black. Now, that's the also nice thing about parkerizing is it will, to a certain extent, fill pits. Um, now, as far as fill, it filling pitting itself, it's not going to eliminate the, the presence of pitting or the, uh, the appearance of pitting, but what it will do is it will, um, it'll very light, because I mean it is a rough surface, and obviously the rougher your, your base coat, the rougher your, your surface is, the better it's going to coat. Um, but it will fill pitting to a certain extent, and it is pretty durable overall, so. These parts actually look really, really nice, so I'm going to double check, give it a good rub. I usually kind of rub it sometimes in a little bit. Sometimes the, the metal needs a little bit of uh, persuasion. I've noticed the same thing with, with bluing as well. Uh, sometimes you kind of need to almost like rub the top layer off to kind of get the, the bottom part to start to take the parkerizing or whatever finish you're putting on there. I think from here, uh, I'm basically, I'm going to let this sit another couple minutes. I'm going to let this um, frame and barrel sit a little bit longer. Uh, I'm going to let it sit, sit a couple of minutes, and then from there I'm going to uh, rinse it one more time. Uh, and then I'm going to dry it off real good, and then I'm going to put it in a water solution to uh, get all the water out of it. And then once I get the other parts strawed, I'm going to put this thing back together. And you guys will see the finished product. I gotta dig up those Hakeem parts, so I'll probably do those in another video. But with the Hakeem, I'll end up showing you the final product so you can kind of see how it looks. So, anyway, uh, we'll come back and we'll get this thing back together. So, thanks for watching.